Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm sharing my story with anger. Never thought I'd be sitting in front of a camera sharing this part of my life, but I feel like I need to. There's also a happy ending to this story, which is another reason why I feel like I should share about this, because what if my experience and my story helps somebody else in a really dark place? You never know. And I always say that experiences and stories are some of the best teachers that we have. So yeah, I wanted to share my story today. Um, it's going to be structured kind of like this. I'll tell you my story, what my anger looked like, my triggers, and then I'll talk about my healing process. And no part of me wants to act like I have all the answers and like I know what I'm talking about because I know who got me here. I know who brought me out of the darkness and that's who will be getting the glory today. Definitely not myself. So let's just jump into it and um, I'll start by sharing my story. I would say my anger from what I remember really started in high school. What my anger looked like in my scenario was I just had these crazy outbursts. I felt like I wasn't really in control when something triggered me or a sibling annoyed me and my patience like hit the brim, I would just explode. I would slam doors, kick the wall. I've kicked a hole in the wall before. I've punched the wall. I would like scream into a pillow. Like I felt like vocally, I just needed to scream as a release. I was an athlete and on a few of my teams, I was like, I hate sharing this, but I was like the person who screamed at my teammates when they messed up. There's no excuse or explanation for that. I just, I was so angry, so isolated, couldn't keep friendships. That's kind of what it looked like in high school. I knew there was a problem there, but I had no clue that it could have been like an internal sickness or imbalance, no idea. So I was just like, okay, I'm an angry person, kind of chalked it up to that. In college, I kind of feel like I got a break a little bit from that. I wouldn't say fully, it kind of came back in spurts, but I was falling in love during college with Tate, who's my husband now. So it was really a happy few years from what I remember. He broke up with me for one of the years and that's when my anger came back. I was very depressed. Then, enter in marriage, and in my first year of marriage, anger came back with vengeance, and it didn't really go away when we had our first child, and it got even stronger with the second child. My anger kind of looked the same across the board. A lot of yelling, wasn't able to be patient. My fuse was so short. I never felt like I could handle it. Then it got to a really bad point in 2020, the year of COVID. And I remember this certain conflict that Tate and I were having. It was an argument and it, it's not even about the argument. It really was how I felt. I was in that argument thinking things that I never thought I would think in my entire life. And to be honest, the way I felt, the things that I was thinking, it scared me, terrified me. I was like, this isn't right. I can't keep living like this. Something has to change. And that's when I dove into what pretty much the next two years of my life have looked like. <laughs> and I'll get into that. But I think that low point, as painful as it was, was incredibly necessary for me to experience because I never want to be there again. Pivotal. I would use that word. It was p pivotal in my life. Here comes the healing process. And again, I cannot take credit for this. It started with a cry to the Lord for help. Lord. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. I just know that I'm in pain and I want this. I want to be free from this. The rest of the story is really him revealing to me in gracious ways how I can heal from this. And the first thing that I did was simplify my life. And it's kind of how my YouTube channel began because I felt so much relief simply from simplifying my life, my schedule, my thoughts, my belongings, the things that I desired, I just got rid of stuff and in doing so, I released this huge burden of always feeling like I wasn't enough. I feel like that was a huge root of my anger. It was discontentment, jealousy, always wanting more, like I was never fully fulfilled. Minimizing my life was a humongous part in my healing process. I would say the second biggest thing that helped me was learning to properly nourish my body. 
in 2020 I came across this term called bioavailable foods and it essentially means foods that the human body absorbs the most nutrients from. And prior to this realization, I was eating pretty much, like my friends would call me a rabbit, I would eat greens all the time with a little bit of chicken, very little fat. I wanted to be skinny and I, I strived for that for so long, but I was so massively depleted. And this realization happened when I learned about bioavailable foods because I really wasn't getting enough nutrients. My body was running on empty and thought it was starving all the time. And when I did that, I, you know, came to learn that my cortisol was just through the roof at all times because it was in, my body was in survival mode. When you're not getting enough nutrients, that's where it goes. This fight or flight response, how can I survive off of the little nutrients that I have left? I was losing hair. I obviously was incredibly angry, wasn't sleeping well, wasn't stable in any way, shape or form, over exercising obviously under eating. It was not, not a good version of me. My skin was so dry. I, I just looked like I was lacking in nutrients. But I started eating this way and it gave me vibrance and energy. I'll tag some people below if you're interested in learning more about that. It's not my expertise, but I've learned so much from it. Let's move on to the next thing that helped me. Defining and memorizing my life's purpose. Before this, I really didn't know what my life's purpose was. I just felt like I needed to be a good wife. I needed to be a good mom. I needed to look good all the time. I wanted to be skinny. I wanted to be fit. I wanted to win literally everything in my life, whether it was the way I looked, the way I felt, the way people saw me. But when I changed that, I saw a massive difference in the way I responded to everything. My purpose in life, the one that I have now written down and memorized is my life goal is to serve the Lord in the little things like my daily habits as well as the way I love and serve other people. That's my life goal. I've had sisters ask me how I've changed and that's the first thing that I tell them. I'm like, I just changed my mindset, changed the things that I was chasing. And I have to work at that still because I'm a sinner and I'm broken and I have selfish desires, but that's that was a huge part of this renewing and my ability to decrease my anger. The last main tip I would say is getting outside as much as possible. I think being outside puts us in our most natural state. It brings homeostasis to our body, which is just this feeling of safety, comfort, relaxing your central nervous system, when honestly all of us are just kind of at this peak, adrenaline, so often because of our to-do lists, what people are asking of us all the time, whether you're a mom or you're working, or even the things that we're intaking all the time, we're just always on alert. So being outside is when my body feels the most peace and when I feel angry, I literally just take my boys and I go outside and I feel instant relief. If you're interested in learning more, look up negative ions, grounding, how it actually scientifically benefits the human body. God is amazing in the way he designed things and that's another huge tool of how I became a calmer version of Margaret. And lastly, I would say there's a bunch of little self-care things that I had to add into my life. Tiny habits make huge impacts. I am all for that. Not this huge life change. You're automatically gonna be a happier, calmer person. You have to work at it. You have to change things little by little and you'll see the massive change down the road. There's a little speed round of self-care things. I talk about this a lot on my channel. So if you're interested, go look at some of my other videos. But speed round is changing my alarm clock. The first thing I hear in the morning used to be this obnoxious, loud iPhone alarm, which just spiked my cortisol, made me super grumpy first thing in the morning. I changed it to the Mudita alarm clock and it's so peaceful. Like they purposefully created this clock to wake you up gently and with beautiful noises. Sometimes I wake up to the sound of the ocean. Sometimes it's this beautiful guitar melody. I love it. It changes my mornings. Two. I stop scrolling at night. I don't waste my time on my phone. I choose to rest and hang out with my husband. Three, I wear blue light blocking glasses. I pay attention to my circadian rhythm, make sure my eyes are outside first thing in the morning and no blue lights waking my system up late at night. That really helps my sleep. Prioritizing sleep is a huge one for me. Journaling in the morning humongous getting quiet time in the morning so that I can check in with myself sitting down while I eat lighting candles good music see not big things just tiny things but when you add them all together that's a huge change so yes I 100% feel free 
from the anger that once owned me. You know, it was important for me to realize while I was going through all of this that I was not an angry person. I had anger. There was an imbalance. There was something not clicking in my brain, not adding up. And that's what was piling on all this anger and this hostility and resentment to literally everything. That's my story. That's Margaret in a nutshell. And I know when I tell people I used to really struggle with anger, they laugh. They don't believe it, but I feel like I'm here and I'm this version because I struggled with anger and I had to overcome it. I had no choice. I was that low that I literally had no choice but to go up. So if you're in that position, my heart goes out to you. I'm so sorry. I know what it feels like. We've had this massive loss in our family over the past month and I felt my anger coming back because I was just in this depleted, chaotic state and I had to fight it back. And I'm determined to do that for the rest of my life. And I hope you know that you are capable of fighting back and there is hope and I'm here to help in any way that I can. If you need to, just chat me down below or DM me or just, you know, don't say anything. Don't feel pressure. I don't know. I just, I really genuinely hope that my story can support you and help you. And um, that's all, that's all I really have. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys in the next video.